welcome to this afternoon's broadcast. I am super excited about this afternoon. I have two good men, two strong doctors with me this afternoon discussing heavy periods. How blessed are we? So um, I will ask them to introduce themselves to you. And after that, we can start our conversation. So I will start with you, Dr. Abude. Please introduce yourself. Okay. Um, good afternoon. My name is Matea Sabude. I'm a resident um, in obstetrician, um, obstetrician gynecologist in Confinity Teaching Hospital, Kumase, Ghana. Yeah. Hi, everyone. My name is Michael Edudaku. I'm one of the medical doctors resident in internal medicine in Milton Keynes Hospital, UK. Thank you very much and welcome once again. So this afternoon, we have the privilege of um, having the company of these two great doctors talking to us through why periods happen, why heavy periods, and at what point should we be um, concerned about it. So Dr. Abude, what is menstruation? How does it come about? Why, does, why do we um, see blood coming out of our vaginas every month? What causes it? Okay, so um, menstruation is actually the cyclical term given to the, the, the flow of blood from the uterus. That's every, every month. So it's a cyclical term. That means from mostly from time to time, you see blood flowing from, of course, from the female once you get to puberty. Yeah, so it's, it's a cyclical evidence. It's a physical evidence um, where you see the flow of blood um, every month from the, the uterus of the, 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 the woman. Yes. Okay. And then let me just um, continue to see. So um, the uterus has a lining that waits for, for, for re receiving the, the, the fertilized egg. So when that doesn't occur, or when pregnancy doesn't occur, the lining of the womb is shed, and that's what comes out as menses. That's what comes out as blood. Mike yes. here, so is there any other components? Is it just blood, or is it a mixture of something else coming out? The, the blood component is just about 30 to 50 percent, actually, the actual blood. But the rest is just the tissue in the lining in the womb. So the, the, the cycle goes in a, in a way that when, 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 you, when, when the cycle begins, the womb begins to build up. Um, as in the tissue begins to grow, then to some point, there is um, to, to about the middle of your menstrual cycle, there is um, a lot of, um, I don't want to use, I'm trying not to. Um, use the technical <laughs> big, big tips. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bring us home. Yeah, please, please um, bear with me. So the, the, one, the, the beginning of the menstrual cycle, the, womb, the tissues begin to grow. And getting to the latter half, you have a lot of glands. When I say glands, they are tissue that produce secretions. Usually these secretions in the womb um, are, are, are nutrients for the, the fertilized egg that will come and implant. That's when you get pregnant. So you have these um, secretions. When I say secretions, I, I hope I'm, I'm being a bit basic. Yes. So these secretions yeah, are part of the, um, part of what your body does to prepare for the egg coming to implant in the womb. That's when you, when you get pregnant. So only about 30 to 50% actually is pure blood, but the rest are the secretions and the lining of the womb that comes out when the egg doesn't get fertilized or when you don't get pregnant at the, at the end of the month, yeah. Okay, so, so it could be that these tissues and glands and then the secretions are uh, sometimes yeah. um, the mucosy and the sticky um, bits that comes with the blood and the menstrual flow. Exactly, yeah, so far you are right. So yes, so the secretions are, um, it's actually glycogen, that's um, a form of 
nutrients when the egg implant or the fertilized egg implant in the womb. So these secretions, the the, and of course you have um, also other glands or other parts of the uh, lining also producing these um, secretions. Yeah, so it's it's basically what you just said. The the secretions are mostly glycogen, which is a form of nutrient source for the 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 implanted. Um, um, implanted um, uh, embryo or implanted fertilized egg, yeah. Okay. Michael, do you have anything to say on that? you want to add well, anything? So, yes, there's lots of um, interesting, you know, thoughts regarding menstruation. I think there's, there's a lot of social aspects of it, but the medical side, really, regarding how the menses occurs, just to add on to what um, Dr. Abude was mentioning, is the fact that you've got the different parts of the body talking to each other and there are hormones that talk to each other. So these are chemicals that different parts of the body release, specifically the brain, the anterior part of the brain called the anterior pituitary, which produces specific hormones to communicate with the ovaries in the woman. And like, it. Which so of the hormones? Got hormones? You've got estrogen, mm -hmm. you've got You've got, um, you, so estrogen comes from the ovaries mainly, but you've got something like follicle stimulating hormone, which stimulates follicles or eggs in the ovary. You've got luteinizing hormone, which also affects different parts of the female reproductive cycle. And it's a way of the body talking to each other at set times of the month for usual cycles. And I say usual because Every woman is different. There are different ways that women have their cycles. Some have longer cycles. I'm sure Dr. Abudu will probably elaborate more on that. Some have shorter cycles. And so you can have situations where the body talks to different parts of the body differently. Okay, bridge... Michael, I'll ask a question at this point. You said the different parts of the body. What role does the brain play? So, it's a, so that's a very crucial question. The yeah, brain, yeah, the brain produces specific hormones that try to communicate with the ovary in the woman and the lining of the uterus. Mm -hmm. So, the brain produces one hormone very important, known as the follicle stimulating hormone, for example. And what it does is it stimulates the ovary to produce estrogen, which enables the lining and the various secretions that the body needs to produce from the uterus to maintain its lining. And it's all in a very specific pattern that enables the body to control menstruation in itself, the flow okay, of blood. So that, does it mean then that our mental health, let's say stress, depression, doesn't have any effect on our menstruation and reproductive health? Really, you couldn't have said it any better, to be honest. Again, it's important to stress that Stress itself has an equivalent chemical in the body, which is called cortisol. And cortisol has a relation to how the brain talks to the different parts of the reproductive cycle, you see. And so if you're very stressed, for example, chances are you could be pushing down the hormones that your body needs to stimulate your ovaries, to stimulate your lining, to enable you to have your menses maybe at a set time. So some people may even miss their menstrual period because of stress in itself. And I think busy people generally may be able to attest to all of these things. Um, Dr. Abude, is there anything else you'd like to add on this? Yeah, I was, hey. going, to ask, I was going to ask Dr. Abude, so how, how can you explain this or in which way will you put it? With this COVID-19 and the stress that it has come with, do you think women are experiencing differences or it will affect our menstrual cycle in any way. All right, can, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Yeah, Michael, Michael, Michael just um, hit the nail on the head. The part of the brain that produces these chemicals um, actually communicates. So when a girl gets to puberty, um, these chemicals that are, are produced in Larger, larger quantities. So that's what actually stimulates the development of the breast. That's what starts giving um, the girls their, their hourglass shape 
Or what yes. we call the Coca um, Cola body. Coca Cola body, yes. Vital stats. So, so, uh, so these same chemicals communicate with the 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 ovaries where your eggs are stored that you've gotten to puberty. So now you need to start releasing um eggs just for fertilization and production. So it's it's uh, actually the, the the normal cycle for 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 for, for, for I mean, for human beings. So when these communicate, they communicate with the 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 ovaries to start maturing the eggs or selecting eggs. So these eggs starts growing, and at the end of the month, one lucky egg is released. So when it's released, and of course around that time, you have sexual intercourse. Then a sperm would fertilize the egg. Then it will flow or migrate into the womb after the fertilization to cause pregnancy. So that's the expected cycle for fertility. But when this doesn't occur, then you have the menstruation occurring. Now, so the, the secretions or the hormones that are produced in the, in the brain, a lot of things affected. So mm -hmm. your physical health, okay? So stress is an important factor. So you can have a woman actually, uh, maybe around the time of exam, if it's a very stressful event in their life, they'll tell you that for, for, for the few time, my menses have delayed. Because, and, and once you probe into that, it could be that it's because of the stress, the physical stress or the mental stress around the time of, um, around the, time of um, yes. the exam has oh. contributed to this, um, to this um, event of delayed menses. And you could also have a woman saying that, oh, he's going through some troubles in the house or, I mean, a lot of things. Yeah. And this can contribute to having a delayed menses or having an, uh, um, an alteration in the normal um, flow or normal cycle. Yeah, so it, it plays a vital role um, in a, and not only that, even physical exercise. So you get to know that if, let's say, you put yourself into rigorous training so for athletes who are preparing for an event and if they go through very rigorous training sometimes this can also affect the production of these hormones and um, contribute to them having a difference or an abnormal um, uterine you know, abnormal menses yeah okay so thank you for throwing light on that back to the cycle what is the the normal the average cycle for um, okay. a woman Okay, so let's let me let me first um, come to what is normal. Then I'll come to what we call abnormal. So yeah. for um for for a normal cycle, we we consider two main things. Um, that's the bleeding itself and the cycle for the menses. So when we say when you, when you say the cycle, what you mean is we want to refer to the start of one menses. And the number of days it takes to get to the next, the flow of the next menses. You understand? So if you start your menses today, when I when I want when I refer to a cycle, when I want to refer to a cycle, I mean how many days does it um, does it take for you to start one menses and get to the other, the beginning of the next menses? So we we call something a cycle. So usually a cycle should last between. Um, 24 days and 38 days. So that's what we refer to as the normal cycle. So a woman would come and one of the things you want to know is a cycle length. And sometimes people confuse it to, to mean what is the duration of flow. So the length, the length or the, the, the frequency, so I can put it that the frequency of the cycle is, is, is what I said. So usually someone would have the cycle every 24 days someone will have the cycle every 38 days. So mm -hmm. any between we consider as normal. Usually most women will have a cycle length of about um, 28 days. And if you read most books, um, you'll find the cycle being 28 days. Another thing we look out for the cycle is the, um, the, the frequency. Okay. okay. So yeah. over a period of let's say six months or six months to a year, um, if you take the cycle, so you could have a very short cycle and a very long cycle. So usually they vary 
for, for, for women, they'll vary from about two to a day, a day or two. So maybe if this month you had your cycle being 28 days, the next month you might have it around 29 or 30 or so. So usually we will we'll consider a, a cycle um, being irregular. If you have a difference between the cycle of about seven to nine days. Okay. Can you say that again, please? Thanks. Okay, so um, you can have cycle irregularity. Mm -hmm. or we say your cycle is irregular. If you have a difference between the longest and shortest cycle being mm -hmm. seven to nine, you understand? So yeah. let's say, let me give an example. So this month, I'm, I'm, I'm now the woman. So this month I had my <laughs> menses um, came on the 24th. If my usual menses is on the 24th, what I expect is if it go if it's within the period of six months, I should have another menses now going to let's say um, thirty five. Mm -hmm. That means there is a difference in about days of my usual cycle, so okay. that would be an irregular. So when that happens, then it's 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 we say that you might have an irregular cycle. Yeah. So how does this um how does this differ for young girls? For girls, because when they start, it takes a bit longer for their cycle to have a pattern. So can you put a bit more light? So usually when the cycle begins, it's now that your body is getting used to these hormones. Um, when, when you start your menses, or what we call in medical terms, menarche. Yeah. So your, 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 these chemicals to stimulate the growth of the, the eggs inside the ovary. Now, what happens is within the first few years, actually most of the menses you have don't lead to the growth of the, the, the eggs to, to mature. So sometimes, and it's, the eggs, it's actually the, the estrogen, is actually produced by these eggs. So you have the, uh, um, let me not use so much medical <laughs> term, but you have the hormones in the brain stimulating the the eggs to grow sometimes not all the eggs grow and one important um, hormone that leads to the growth of the lining of the womb is estrogen now when the hormones in the brain stimulate the eggs sometimes especially when the beginning the beginning of in fact the extremes let me let me use the extremes of the the the, the, the menstrual age so very early that's from maybe 14 to 25 when your menses starts, and also when you are getting around menopause. So usually the, 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 the hormones that are produced don't lead to the eggs maturing. So at the very beginning, you have some of the eggs um, not being sensitized to ovulate. So as such, the, 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 the hormones that are, produced, that are produced by these eggs to build the endometrium or build the lining of the womb to to receive that doesn't happen so you might that you might have irregular menses it's very normal at least for the first two to three years of of starting your menstrual cycle for for the young girls you might have irregular menses and we we actually acknowledge that as the normal or, or the well, yeah and also so you would have maybe breakages in, in months so you, your menses might come for the first month and then um, for the first month and about two or more months you might not have it so maybe another one occurs the next five months or so and later gradually it becomes regularized is it, 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 that's for the beginning now when you get to the other extreme of the the, the menstrual age that's mm -hmm. around 42 going usually what happens um, when you're about just reaching menopause now all these eggs that actually produce the estrogen are depleted when you are getting around to menopause. So, so the what hormones age, are depleted, but what, what age you know is that for the menopause dog? Um, so it, it differs. So we, we, okay. we usually expect um around um like in the late forties, so forty five to fifty. I mean, it differs. It differs from from woman to woman. Now some some women might have it very early. Um, around the 40, they start um, 
showing signs of menopause. But usually from 45 to 50, that's in our terrain. And we found out also that um, menopause do occur different in different um, terrains or different um, environments. Yes. But for, for our environment, about 42 to about 50 years, some, some might go, of course, further to 55, but usually around that time. So around that time, usually what we see is that the eggs are depleted or the, you've sort of um, ovulated uh, most of your eggs. They are getting depleted. And so now these same eggs at the end of the month, when you produce the hormones from the brain, they don't sensitize them as such to, 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 to start producing the estrogen. That would prepare the womb. Yeah. So you might okay. have... Yeah. Let me take you back a bit to um, the young girls because we work with girls in school. That is our uh, dominant purpose, girls and menstruation. So at what point should a girl or a mother be concerned that the uh, menstrual um, cycle is not um, consistent or it's not regular? At what point? Okay, so um, as I said... From, the, from menarche. Okay, so as I said, from, from menarche, we expect your cycle to become very regular after two or three years okay so yeah so within within that time it's like the greatest period for your body to start or your ovaries to start um growing according to the hormones being produced in the 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 the, the head to stimulate them so yeah i would say about um two to three years would be the uh, um, the, the usual or the normal Right. So if after two to three years it's, it hasn't come into the pattern, then we need to. Yeah, then you can you can sort to find out. Of course, there are other pathologies or other um, abnormalities that can contribute to that. So then you might need to see your OBGYN and um, so that we okay. investigate and find the cause. So how is um, menstrual abnormalities common in girls? Um, it's 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 quite common. Um, it's it. Um, I I I don't want to put a figure to it because it differs from the location. But in our terrain, um, about twenty to thirty percent, um, females would would come will come with complaints or will experience um complaints of abnormal cycle. Um, in, in, in at a time, as in, in the other area. Yeah. So I'm, it's, it's quite... I'm asking particularly for young girls, teenagers. Okay. Like how so, common so... is that year for teenagers, abnormalities? Hmm. So um, it, 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 it's hard to actually put a figure to it, as in, say, 20% or 30%. No, it, it's a bit difficult because um, I'm not sure we've done a lot of research to um find out but yes um if they do okay once in a lifetime we expect women to experience the abnormalities or these abnormalities and um as at when it's it's you notice the pattern prolonging or going to about uh, 90 days or more that's about uh, about three months or more you should see us right. so that we will diagnose rightly and know what's going on know what to go on. Okay, so how do we classify a period as heavy? Okay, so yes, so I, I first talked about the cycle. Now the, the, the next thing is actually the the, the, the period itself or the menses itself. Yes. So we, we will classify it as heavy or we have a definition to, to it. So okay. we we'll say that we we'll say that um, your menses are heavy if you 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 bleed in quantities that actually affect um, the physical, emotional, social, and material quality of life of, of the patient. So it differs from woman to woman. One, one, one would bleed um, um, just, uh, I, I don't know. Um, that, I had a picture, uh, if, if you can share the, the picture. Yeah, <laughs> so we you will share the screen for you now. Okay, so one person, Bleed, use some number of parts throughout okay. the cycle, and it's the norm or it's the usual for for the person. But if it affects, so it's actually based on the woman's um, definition. So if this 
cycle was excessive in such a way that it affected the physical. So sometimes when they bleed so much so that um, physically they drain because their blood level is low. Um, that's that's the physical aspect. And emotionally, of course, if, mm -hmm. if, if they bleed so much that they are head, um, that could that could also um, um, also contribute to heavy menstrual bleeding. And again, socially, they could bleed so much that the material they use to contain or prevent the flow also um, is not adequate. So you can find our young girls not even going to school because their menstrual um, flow is, is, is heavy. Okay. Or even material have the resources to um, get these material to stop the flow. So any of these things, we've made it vague so that any anyone or any it's actually based on the woman's definition so any any of these if the woman comes with bleeding in in these quantities that um that um engulf any of these factors mm -hmm. we can attribute to a heavy menstrual flow but okay. um, for the cow side we we actually measure the flow we can actually measure the flow so if you have bleeding mm -hmm. from the from whom in, in quantity, so the usual bleeding is about 35 to 80 mils for the whole cycle. Okay, okay 35 I, I, to 80 mils for av the average woman. Average woman for the whole cycle. Okay, okay so you start, start your cycle, usually, and um, usually you start your cycle, the first two to three days are the heaviest. Yeah. Okay, um, later you get to, it gets to drop, or the flow gets to drop when you get to. The, the fifth day, that's if you bleed for that, that those number of days. So usually that's what we... Uh, we Dr. Abude, so there are some women who also um, have, um, from the beginning, they have lesser bleeding. And as it's getting to the end, it becomes heavy. Yeah, so as I said, these things are, they are, they are vast for every woman. Okay. As, as different, different as, the, as, the, as there are noses, you have different women coming with different, um, okay. different bleeding, but the usual or the norm is what I'm describing. Yes. Yeah. So, so you you'd have usually the first two days, the first two to three days being the heaviest. It's normally it's, the first day might even start light, then the second day very heavy, the okay. third day quite um, a little heavier, then it sort of weighs down to the. The, the now they don't have the, the spots in what we call spotting. Yes. So usually the quantity we expect for the whole, like I was saying, the whole menstrual cycle is 35 to 80 mils per cycle. Now the diagram I showed you, um you could you could break it up again. It yeah. indicates can we share the screen the, again please so it indicates the the like let's say if you use the part it indicates the we, we we put a point. We put points on these these. Uh, so we have the tampons and the pads. And okay. the water you put and the cloth. Uh, we even estimate that large cloth and um, small cloth. So if you if so if you consider the pad, you can see that we give a point. If let's say you change, let's say about um, you use let's say in our environment, you have most women using pads. Tampons are not so common in our our setting so you can have three categories of parts this is the equatorial um view so okay. there's actually a chart a chart there's actually a chart associated with this pictorial diagram so sometimes if you come we would offer these um, diagrams to you and um let you describe how heavy your menses are so let's say a woman might change um um the parts the the first one about five times a day, okay? So mm -hmm. usually we attribute a point to a lightly um, stained pad. So let's say if we've had these um, stained pad used about five times a day, um, the next day you record the, 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 the category or the class of pad that was soaked. So you can calculate all these in the points. So usually we would say a woman has had a, heavy menstrual bleeding. Mm -hmm. If at the end of the cycle point, she, she bled more than 100 to 150 um, um, points per the diagram. Am I making sense? Yes. So, so let's say a day. Well. So, 
that could involve the cloth as well. It involves the cloth. So let's say okay. if you if you if you stain your part, mm -hmm. um, let's say uh, the, the the middle one is the five points, and you change you change about three times a day. So on day one, yep. used I used um I used um three of the five. So that would be fifteen for that day. Okay. Yes. Uh, example. And mm -hmm. day two, I used two of the two of the five. And maybe two of the the twenty, the twenty points. So the deeply stayed. So um on day two, I had to change my pad and um about three, about two of them were soaked um to the middle ones, like five. And I used let's say one of them was soaked um to the last point. So that that would be twenty. That so that will contribute to about thirty for the second day. Am I making sense? Yes, there's a bit of calculation in there. Yes, but it makes sense. Actually, actually. So you just so must add, you just must um from the um let's say if we are taking the middle one, the five. So if your blood is the blood that has come out on day one, you've changed about three of this sort, not not heavily soiled. You multiply the number of of paths by the five, and that will give you the point for that day. Yes, exactly. Yes. So, so that would be the point for that day. So, as a, the whole cycle, you accumulate, you add everything. Now, if your point is more than hundred, some say more than one hundred fifty. Usually, mm -hmm. it connotes that you bled more than the eighty um, we expect, and that that could be termed as the heavy menstrual bleeding for for that woman. Okay. You understand? So, these are some of the pictorial to help us understand how heavy. A woman is bleeding. I'll come to the corset later. The very okay. important thing we consider about the men is the duration. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we expect the average woman to bleed for about three to seven days. But if you bleed more than eight days, less in the duration, so from the start of the menses, you bled for continuously for more than eight days, we consider that as also abnormal. And that that could yeah, that could that could be. As a result of the the um, bleed, bleeding abnormalities, um, Dr. Michael Edudaku was talking about. Mm -hmm. So some people are born um, um, blood um, abnormal bleeding, or what we call hemophilias. Um, so so they they uh, have the tendency to bleed a lot, okay. and usually, yeah. So usually, young girls who have these um, abnormalities, they usually start their very first menses bleeding so much or bleeding a lot mm -hmm. yeah and yeah so they usually or it could be even due to some drugs so some drugs are mm -hmm. known to thinness. and if a woman is put on any of these blood thinness he could bleed for 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 that longer time yeah okay so I'll, something I'll, like aspirin aspirin yeah exactly aspirin is is, is a part and also we have warfarin um, yes. one blood thinner that um, um, is used for those that have a tendency to develop clots in the legs. Um, yes. So these things can, um, can actually contribute to, 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 to it. So let me just um, try and summarize. So um, as I said, the menses itself, we have two main categories. So we consider the, the flow or the heaviness in the flow. So usually, um, below 35, we, we term it as a light flow, and above 80 mils, 80 mils is a heavy flow. And some of these pictorial diagrams I showed are uh, some, some of the ways you can um, learn about how heavy you are flowing. And so that's the okay. You had a question, yeah. At what point should we be worried? Because sometimes is it not is it okay or is it acceptable to have one heavy flow? Let's say in a period of six months. Yes. At what okay. point should we be worried about it? In what yes. sequence? How many times should it come for you to be worried that no, I need to see a guy? Yeah. So as I said, anytime you have any flow that affects affects um, your your physical nature, so you bleed so much that you're of anemia. Or you bleed so much so that 
um, physically, you are you are worried or emotionally or anything that affects your 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 mental the overall well being. It could be social. It could be that you bless so much that um you don't even have the material or the resources to contain yeah. that bleeding. We time it as heavy menstrual bleeding because okay. it's not usual. Even when it happens, if, even if it's just one episode. If it's just one episode, yes. Okay, you should, you should see your doctor. Investigate. And of course, it might be nothing. Of course, it might be nothing. It might be maybe um you you've been or you you've been on um these blood thinners I was talking about or you've um you've maybe okay some contraceptive so you've been you started a new contraceptive usually they they might have a breakthrough bleed that can sometimes be mm -hmm. heavy so when you come and per our interaction with you we yeah. take the history yeah then we, we can we can conclude or we can then um identify these causing factors so as soon as you have any menstrual bleeding it's reason enough for you to come of course let me rule out let me rule out that of course you can have um pregnancies mm -hmm. okay lots of pregnancies that that could contribute to this so the important thing is anytime you have any abnormal bleeding even once it's, it's enough to um come to the hospital so that we investigate and find out what's what the cause is okay so how is it important for a um, woman to sort of replenish or take um, multivitamins to um, restore everything that we've lost at the end of the month? Michael, do you, do you want to? Yeah, to Michael. So, so, so really, as all already explained, mm -hmm. when you're losing these um, products, blood, tissue, you have nutrients that you're losing as well. And you need these vitamins and minerals to help you to build these um, tissues to enable you to have normal cycles, for example. And so something like normal iron supplements are very good because iron is a very important ingredient for forming blood cells itself. And so you need to supplement, especially if you're having symptoms of anemia, like your heart is beating very fast, you're feeling very dizzy, it's affecting socially your ability to go out emotionally psychologically it would be good to have these supplements on hand as well in ghana in particular it's over the counter you can get them yeah. here in the uk as well it's quite easy to access um again these are things that you have to look out for multivitamins if taken in excess aren't really great but it's good that you have at least one every day in your cycle if you feel that you're having these symptoms so apart okay. from, um, apart, did you want to say anything, Dr. Abude? Yes. So Go for on. a normal, it shouldn't affect you, your health or your, it shouldn't affect you physically for, for your normal menses. So your usual food, the nutrients you get in your food, I mean, the, the normal food you eat, if you eat a well-balanced diet, um, it, it shouldn't affect any, 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 I mean, it shouldn't affect the, the, your, your body when you flow. Okay. Unless you, your message becomes really heavy, that's when you need the iron and you need the the folic. That's all help in production of blood. So for I won't I won't as I say recommend. Um, usually we don't recommend multivite or iron for the average woman. No. Okay. Unless blood in quantities that really um, we would describe as heavy, or you yourself describe as heavy. That's when we will put you on this motorbike, but we don't routinely or usually recommend it for 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 our women. Just your normal balanced diet will would suffice. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So apart from some of the factors that you have mentioned, like um, taking some um, medications, being on contraceptive, what other what other factors can cause heavy bleeding? Okay. So we have we have actually. A lot of let me group it. Let me group it into the structure and the non C or abnormality. So the common commonness is the fibroids or what we call um, in our term. So we have these abnormal growth occurring in the lining of the womb that could cause bleeding or especially when they happen in the lining of the the, the womb or in the cavity. Um, they they actually take a lot of blood 
to grow. It, it, it's it's um I, I won't say it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's a sort of an abnormal growth in the muscle of the uterus or the the fibrous part of the uterus. So when they grow, they 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 take a lot of blood and that could contribute to you losing a lot of blood in the in the womb. And also by their nature, they enlarge the womb. And when they enlarge the womb, they they make the lining of the womb um. Um, they enlarge the, the lining of the womb, and that could also contribute to the womb. Now, um, I, I, let me just hit on this. Um, the menstrual pain you have is as a result of the womb contracting when you are having your menses. Um, the menstrual pains is as a result of the womb contracting when you are having the menses. That also helps in stopping the bleeding. So, right, we know also sometimes the active contracting or the active... Um, 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 yeah, contraction of the womb at, at that time when you are having your menses, and that can be bleeding. Another important uh, factor is uh, malignancies or what we call um, um, okay, so you could also have it could be a sign of cancer if you are bleeding heavily, um, especially in the womb, in the womb, or some some women might have um, cervical cancers that might mm -hmm. actually alter their 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 bleeding usually making it very heavy so it's 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 one of the giveaways for cancers is actually abnormal uterine bleeding or heavy menstrual ble um, bleeding and you can have even some ovarian cancers i mean these ovarian cancers some produce the estrogen the the hormone i was saying prepares the endometrium or the lining of the womb if if they produce these in large quantities that could also um, build up the lining of the womb so much that um, once they are built to a thick level and they are <laughs> shed, once you could have a, 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 a heavy menstrual bleeding. So anytime you have a menstrual bleeding, and then um, we have um, causes like um, what we call adenomyosis. Um, it's What's a big thing. <laughs> what, what, what it simply means is that the lining of the womb, you see the lining of the womb, it's eating into the muscle of the womb itself. So you have the lining of the womb. So the womb, the lining of the womb is a, is a different tissue. And that's what you share every month as the menses. Now you can have some, this lining of the womb eating into the very muscle of the womb. You understand? So sometimes it can also lead to actually painful and heavy menses. So these are some of the structural causes um, that that could um, lead to the the heavy menses you have. Now the non structural causes are the coagulopathy I was talking about. So um, some women, because maybe they are on drugs or because they have some inherent bleeding abnormality, they would bleed heavily at the end of the month. And of course, it might come with other symptoms like having bleeding from the nose or having a small cut which will bleed for so long. Uh, Michael might elaborate more on that. That that would be in this. Um, in his food, and all you can have um, um, ov ovulatory dysfunctions. So sometimes you have women um, because they are on um, or they, they are on some form of contraception. Con the, the contraception actually make use of um, progesterone and the estrogen that that also affects the, the 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 womb actually. So if you are on any of these or or commonly. Um, a, a medical syndrome we call PCOS or polycystic ovarian syndrome. So all these might produce a whole lot of um, hormones that would affect the production of, uh, that would affect, sorry, the building of the lining of the womb and also at the end affect the menstrual flow. You understand? And um, we have the, the atrogenic causes. Um, the atrogenic are the the drugs you might give, so warfarin, the aspirin you mentioned. So some of these non-structural things can, can really affect how heavy or how light or how delayed or how um, 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 infrequent or frequent or irregular a, a woman bleed, yeah. Yeah, Michael, would you want to come in at this point? Yes, so in terms of the other medical things that can cause heavy bleeding, or abnormal bleeding. I think we've mentioned drugs already, very, very important. So something like warfarin, which is a blood thinner, very commonly used in patients who may have clots or 
a high risk of developing clots. If they're on warfarin, for example, they may have a tendency to bleed a bit more. In younger girls who are just hitting puberty growing up, if they are having heavy menses, majority of the time it's probably something we call physiological. So this would be the case where your body is just adjusting to itself. Remember, we were talking about the hormones talking to each other, the yeah. brain talking to the ovary, the lining of the womb. So your body is just trying to, like, you know, trying to make sure that the different parts of the body respond appropriately to all these hormones that it's encountering. Again, the bleeding disorders are quite common in this part of the world. In Ghana as well, um, there are bleeding disorders that the hematology team do pick up. So there are these factors we have in the blood. One example is called von Willebrand. So there's a disease called the von Willebrand um, disease where mm. patients have a lot of bleeding and it's because they lack a factor that is able to help them to form a clot accurately. Right. And this can enable them to bleed excessively. They become very anemic and they may require even blood transfusion just to try and balance the amount of blood that they've lost really. So things like hemophilia would produce the tendency to form clots. And so maybe patients may come with excessive clots. And as Dr. Abude was explaining, clots have a lot of blood cells which have clumped together, you see. So if you see clots in your menses, mm -hmm. there's chances that you are producing quite a lot of blood which has clumped together. Again, it could be an indication of chances that you could develop anemia for which you may even require hospitalization. So these are just some of the few things that could so contribute to. The clots, they are very common. Yeah. Yeah, every month you see some clots. So at what point should you be worried? How big should it be for you to be worried? I think Dr. Abudi has actually explained that quite clearly. So usually in the clinic, for the gynecology clinic, I'm aware that they have the um, charting system that they use to assess how frequent you're changing your you, can you, can you, What I mean is, can you use an everyday item to say that maybe when you see a clot as big as a lemon, you should be worried about it? All oh, right. Yes. Well, that would be a big one, though, yes. yes. So in the UK, for example, the 50p <laughs> coin, if you've seen uh -huh. three or four of those, then you're quite worried that you are producing lots of clots. Okay. Um, the 50p coin in the UK. In Ghana, um, I think the biggest coin would be two cities, or is it one city? Mike, um, I not... uh, well, I don't know, Dr. Abude. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Abude. <laughs> What's the biggest coin in Ghana? Uh, um, that would be, I think, now there is the, is it the 50, 50 pesos? Yeah. It's so a 50 pesos, yeah. Okay. If you see a cloth in your menses, the size of a 50 pesos coin, yeah, probably that's, that's, um, a big clot and um it's it's it might not be anything but you should have have that checked you should have the 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 checked for for any heavy menstrual bleeding yeah so the 50 percent point is actually a good a good example yeah okay so, so how many so, of them how many of them for usually, usually you have other when you are shedding your womb you have um, um can i say enzymes that breaks down the the clots you form in your womb, if you are if you are bleeding um, in quantities that is usual, you have um, enzymes breaking down this clot. Okay, so if you bleed heavy, if you bleed quite heavy, these enzymes don't break down these clots in the size that that um, in, in break down these clots before they come out. So they'll come out as a clot, you see. Mm -hmm. And when, the, when, when this happens, you should have, I won't put a quantity to it because, um, if I ask, yeah, because, um, I, I mean, any clot, any clot actually, if you see a size of um, the 50 um, CD or the 50 Tory Persuas um, coin for, for yeah. our folks in Ghana, um, it's, it's, it's something you should, you should look out for. Um, it's something you should come or, or, or I mean, report so that we, we investigate. But all in all, you can see that the scoring system attributed some level of clots to it. So the, the small clots had a point of one, the large clots had a point of five. So if you add everything at the end of the month and 
it's beyond 100 points or beyond, um, some would say, 150 points, um, it could indicate or signify heavy menstrual bleeding that um, you might have to come to that. We investigate appropriately and find out the cause and treat, yeah. Okay, so can this be corrected for the factors that you get, the physiological factors, how are they corrected? What's the treatment? Once we, once we investigate and find out the cause, the, yes. the easier side is would be the treatment, obviously. Okay. The, in fact, the most important point is finding out the cause. So if, let's say, you have um, the coagulopathies or the, the hemophilias and, and, and the like, okay? I know they, they have, um, they might have some factors that they, they get from time to time to help them with, 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 um, with, with, um, with is, it, um, um, is it breaking down, uh, sorry, help them with their clotting um, or, or advise me sometimes. I recommend some advice that would help. Um, if, if it's, it's a drug you are on, aspirin or, or the warfarin, you know how to either take it out or take, give you an alternative drug or stop the usage of those drugs to help with, with, with it. And of course, if you have a structural um, component, like you have a fibroid, which, um, which is quite common in our terrain, about 50% of women actually have it. Yeah, I think it's very common um, in for, black for, women. Yeah, in black women especially. Yes. So if you, if you have it to the extent that it's causing this bleeding and it's actually affecting your health, then probably you might have to come so that we take it out for, for you. And um, as I said, if you have a malignancy or what we call a cancer of the womb, then we manage appropriately. So once we find out the cause, usually treatment is quite, um, is quite um, basic or is quite... Um, 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 something we do is... Okay. Dr. Abude, let me ask you a question on the fibroids. Does the size... Yeah. I was just going to ask that... You ask yeah, I was going to ask... I have two questions, actually. With the fibroids, um, uh, does the size of the fibroids determine the flow or determine how heavy the flow is because yes. some women will have very tiny fibroids and some so can you explain it a bit so the fibroids the fibroids um, um are very important the size matters because okay. you could have a, a fibroid which is quite big sometimes they can grow so big that it it's actually affect the whole uterus bringing the uterus up to a pregnant woman who is like fully termed yeah. When I say fully time, like the pregnancy time, so you can have it getting all the way to the upper part of your stomach. So these fibroids, um, the size actually matters because especially those that um, distort or changes the lining of the womb, the shape of your womb, what we call endometrial distortment. When this happens, it could actually cause a lot of bleeding. And again, um, especially those that um, the fibroid that impinge or um, protrude in the in the endometrium or in the lining of the womb, they usually cause a lot of bleeding. Um, we are time is almost up, but we have to talk about yeah. Um One of these I think, things. I think uh, we'll have to do a second what? session, Doctor. Today, we will have to do what? a second session definitely. Yeah, one one of the the good things about menstrual pain is that. Um, they actually produce chemical. They actually chemicals that um, contract or um, help the uterus to contract or, or push so that it pushes away the the menstrual flow at the end of the month. So usually, when you are having the flow, you have these pains or cramps. It's actually the uterus contracting to push out the content of the blood and everything. And when they contract to they sort of form a living like it. Let's say if you have vessels going, vessels going through your the muscle, when they contract, they sort of close the vessels. Mm -hmm. So by that, you have um, less bleeding at the end of the month when, when you are actually um, having this cramp. Now, fibroids, because of their position, prevent these contractions or prevent this uterus from contracting. So by that, if, if you have a raw area, that is just shared 
and the uterus is not contracting because there is a big fibroid which is preventing the muscles from um, actually contracting. You would obviously imagine that you, you might have more bleeding that's at the end of the month. So by their size, so to answer your question, by their size mm -hmm. and by their location, they do cause a lot of bleeding. And in okay. fact, in the in the in the in our clinic, our clinic is one of the most common presentations of um, of, of heavy menstrual bleeding. Usually, when you investigate, you see that these women have fibroids quite large or um, situated right in the in the in the lining of the womb. Okay, so which means that the size of the fibroids will determine the kind of um, treatment that you give. Yes, exactly. It, it's okay. also part of that. Um, especially with the symptoms they bring, like the bleeding or sometimes um, the, the structures they, they impinge on. Some fibroids can, can impinge on the bladder. The bladder is just in front of the womb. So while the uterus is so big, they sometimes can press on the bladder and you have to go to you go and urinate or empty your bladder almost um every hour so if okay. the fibroids have any of any of these things yeah we, we might decide and operate or fertility if it's affecting your fertility um then we might um go in and take out the fibroids yeah Okay, our time is far gone. It's already um, an hour, but I have a question, a, a question that keeps coming to us. How safe is it to have sex when you are menstruating? All right, it's, it's an interesting um, question. There are, I, I won't, I won't, um, I won't, um, um, how do I say? Um, say it's a bad thing. There's a, there's, so the longer short, there is a yes and no answer to, to this. Okay. Advantages. So let me go to the advantages first. Now, the the the, the advantages is that um, one one of the main things is that sex obviously releases a good hormone, what we call mm -hmm. end of. Now this hormone makes you feel good. This hormone actually has some um, painkiller effect. Um, this end of thing. So especially those who have menstrual cramps. It's recommended that sex might be good for, for, for preventing or reducing those menstrual cramps. So, I'm, mm -hmm. I like. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> yeah. So, so that's one of the main things. And of course, around that time, you are safe, as in, you are safe as in pregnancy. That's it, yes. So, some of these are the advantages. And of course, you might not need lubrication. Yes. For sex of the flow and all. Yes. All. So those are the two advantages. But we know that most um, sexually transmitted infections are actually bloodborne. Mm -hmm. So HIV, hepatitis B, mm -hmm. and the like, they are actually in blood. And around that time, if you have blood, the very, um, the very um, um, medium for which these um, bacteria thrive, if you have it. If you have it flowing out of the woman, um, you, you, the man, can easily get infected if the woman has any of this infection. You understand? So it's, it's, it's again a no for the man himself. And again, blood is a good medium for other bacteria to grow. So you have um, bacteria also thriving in the medium of blood that, that's flowing. Again, when you are having your menses, the womb, the, the opening of the womb, slightly mm -hmm. opens to okay. allow them out but as as much as you open a door you're also allowing inflow of bacteria so especially when you put a foreign body in there so for the use of the tampons one of the things that um, discourage people from tampons is the risk yeah. of having what we call toxic shock syndrome that's yeah, a very yeah that's a very severe infection that yeah. um usually put a lot of women at risk that's mm -hmm. when you leave the tampon in there it's because this blood medium is a very good medium the blood is a very good medium for bacteria to grow and thrive in the womb or in that setting so mm -hmm. that's um, one thing um very clear about it so yeah so the the no no's are the for medically the no no's are the fact that blood itself is a medium for transmission of infection 
and we know that the uterus, um, the, the opening of the womb, that the service um, opens up to allow the flow of blood out, but as much as it opens up, um, it allows the tracking up of infection in the vagina all the way climbing up. So you'd be at risk of what we call pelvic inflammatory um, diseases. That's mm -hmm. after, uh, around the time you are having your men and um, some of these things. So these are the things. So in fact, um, it, it, it's, it's a yes or no answer. Um, yes. we, we won't, but we, of course, we don't recommend having, um, because of the risk of infection, um, we don't recommend having um, sex around around the time of uh, menses. Yeah. Will, will having sex stop the flow? Um. Yes. Yes. Um. There are some some some. It's research that said that um, when you have sex, especially when you get the woman to orgasm, there is mm -hmm. some natural um, contraction of mm -hmm. the womb. Also contract, and as I told you. Um, one of the main things of um, the, the main uses of the contraction is that it pushes out the contents of the, the, the womb. Oh, yeah. Some have said that, well, for women who had sex during their menses, and so I, I read, I think I was reading on it some time ago, and it suggested that for women who, who have sex during their menses, because of the contraction associated with orgasm, it helps pushes out the um, the uterine content or the blood, and that sort of lessens or shortens the the flow, uh, the menstrual flow. So yeah, you um, there are research on it, but I don't think it's um, it's it's something a concrete evidence to suggest that. Okay, so if this is true, let's assume this finding is yeah. true. Would it have any effects on the health of sex and having sex? Um, I, my line got, my line was breaking, so I didn't hear your last part, the last part of the question. You were saying that if this yeah. is true. What? Yeah, if this research is true, would, would it have any effect on the health of a woman if the, um, the natural flow is stopped from an external factor like having sex? No, 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 it shouldn't. No, okay. it shouldn't. No, I don't think it should, no. Okay. Michael, would you want to add on? I think just in summary to everything that's happening, mm -hmm. um, for the young girls in particular growing up, it's something perfectly normal for your body. Try to adjust to it as appropriate as you can. Speak to your mother or a woman in trust that you can confide in regarding these things. Your body is undergoing natural changes. You have a high chance of seeing these changes change over time. And so it's good to look after yourself well. You are bathing regularly. You are using appropriate menstrual products and you are eating healthy. And that should just keep you in safe check. Yeah, okay. Oh, one last question I just remembered. What is, would eating milk on your menses stop your flow? Eating milk. Or no. milk related products. Um, no, I, I, I shouldn't. It shouldn't. Um, I, I don't know about any um content of milk that should prevent uh, menstrual flow. I must say that the most common um things that may become come into your body that will prevent menstrual flow is the the hormonal contraception women use. Yeah. Um, of course, in some some of these hormones you are talking about the estrogen and progestin, that's an artificial form of the progesterone that alters menses. Aside that, I think all foods um, are, are allowed and shouldn't affect the flow of your menses. Um, let me chip in this just before we close. There are also um, um, premenstrual syndrome. Um, yeah. these, these are syndromes or symptoms that you find just about three to amount, within, within three days to the beginning of your menses. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's also not so common in our part of the world. I don't know whether because men don't report it or, or, or something, but these are characteristics, usually physical, behavioral, and psychological symptoms that occur repeatedly with every menses and usually occurs, as I said, about three to, I mean, about three days to the beginning of the menses. And with the onset of the menses, these symptoms sort of um, 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 go. 
and it can be so severe that it can affect actually the productiveness of 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 the woman let's yeah. say if and they have a lot of bloating that's um they have breast movement they are they have bloating they are vom some will vomit some will have i mean they the, become very moody and some of us you cannot please us with anything around that time that yeah is, exactly so so some of these things are some of the abnormalities or some of the um things that are associated with menses that um we should know about As, aside the, the heavy or the bleeding, um part. yeah hello yeah yeah, we didn't so, catch we didn't catch your last statement. Uh, oh, sorry. So I was just saying that some of, some of these um, the premenstrual syndrome. These are some of the 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 other side of the mess. Apart from the flow itself, that um, can present some of the 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 issues that can present for women having their their menses. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So. In overall, in total, just before I let you go, how what 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 is one of the sure ways, the easiest ways, one of one of the um simplest ways that we can achieve a, a, a normal menstrual health that would be common to every woman, irrespective of where the person is. If the person is living in a in a village somewhere, the person is is living somewhere in America, irrespective of your socioeconomic background. What can we do? What is the simplest thing that is common to every woman to achieve a good menstrual health? Um, so, uh, a natural that of course, um, so, um, health wise, as in the definition of health is. Um, they'll say the 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 state of complete um, physical, social, emotional well-being, and not necessarily the abs uh, the presence of disease or mental and and psychological well-being. Mm -hmm. Your men have a normal flow. You should have a normal, um, regular, as I said. So you should have a a, a frequent normal not heavy flow for 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 for, for, the, for the woman and anytime you have any abnormal flow um whether being the frequency whether being the the the, the irregularity whether being the duration or or the heaviness mm -hmm. you should always um seek help so that we investigate and and yes. and and uh, yeah so basically that's what i would i would say okay. it's, it's a normal or a natural thing that um sh yeah. shouldn't be affected by 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 things yeah okay all right then so all too soon here we are an hour is gone and we couldn't even finish our discussion so that is it all has been laid there so you can go back on this record when there are really good knowledge based and evidence-based facts that has been shared so you can go back and then check on it later. So thank you very much, Dr. Abude. Thank you very much, Dr. Dudako, for coming on this afternoon. And we look forward to hosting you again. Thank you very much.